Hello, Altersgate UMC family and friends. Pastor Randy here for Monday's devotional. Uh, coming to you today, thinking about uh, the opportunity to have a peace march tomorrow at four o'clock at Walt Whitman School, along with our Bishop Sharma Lewis and our District Superintendent, Jeff Nickel, Pastor Emily, hopefully some members from our Altersgate family and friends from the community, along with other United Methodist clergy. As I thought about this march, uh, I thought about some of the stories in the Bible. I thought about how Moses went back to Egypt and how he led the people out of Egypt to the Red Sea. Then he led through a march of the Red Sea when it opened. And eventually he would lead them through the wilderness and take them towards the Promised Land. Then Joshua would come in and there would actually be a march around Jericho. You may remember how Joshua fought the battle of Jericho and how the people walked around the city seven times and then blew the trumpet and the walls fell down. What walls might we like to see fall down because we're willing to take a march and pray and do that thing that God wants us to do to work for peace and justice. And then I think about Jesus. When Jesus uh, came to the end of his days, he had a, if you will, march into Jerusalem. He rode on the back of a donkey and the disciples went before him and the people cheered and they laid down their coats, little knowing that Jesus would go to the cross for us and give his life a ransom for all of our sins. And especially during this age in which we live, the sin of racism. Now, I think about some of the walks and the marches I've been on. I've had the opportunity to do spirit walks where we focused on the fruit of the spirit and building unity within the life of the church as each part did its work in the building up of love. I've thought about prayer walks that I've been on before in both Front Royal and, and Culpeper and how we walk through the town and we prayed for businesses, we prayed for schools, we prayed for the hospital, we prayed for the police department, we prayed for just the people that lived in the community. And we did that several times. And for me, this peace walk is kind of like a prayer walk because one of the things I'm going to be doing is not just participating with many other clergy and members of our church and community, but I'm also going to be praying. So if you come on this march, one of the things I'll ask you to do is to be in prayer. You know, uh, I think of Jesus' words uh, as he began his ministry in Luke chapter 4, beginning with verse 18, where it says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And that's kind of how I feel about this March that's coming up. Everybody may or may not agree with this. You may want to participate. You may not be able to participate. You may have reasons why not to participate. But I know God has put it on my heart to be part of this, and I'm looking forward to it. I do want to share that I believe there's a purpose behind what we're doing. Uh, why would we want to support such a march? And you'll find more of this information after the video devotional comes out today from our district superintendent. First, because an expression of our, it's an expression of our discipleship as followers of Jesus Christ as our Lord. But beyond bearing witness to our faith, it may also be a means for internal healing or catharsis for those who are struggling to do something that will be a positive expression of what they're feeling. It might also be a catalyst to engage action that will change the societal structures and systems that continue to perpetuate racial disparity in our country. It can also be a rallying cry for the church to refocus our efforts and energies as God's agents for goodness, healing, justice, and reconciliation in the world in which we live today. It's a whole lot about how Jesus came and what his purpose was in ministering in his day and time. Did Jesus have to deal with racism and prejudices all the time? Just think about how people treated the Samaritans, and you think about how he treated the Samaritans. So may God be with us as we look forward to our march at 4 o'clock tomorrow. If you can't participate, please be in prayer. God bless you, be with you, and the Lord be gracious unto you this day and in the week ahead. Amen.